Hi, Eric again from Lasers Game TV, and that's the news from the October 2020. We have very interesting stuff from hand scanner market, from um, slam scanner application, from classification, and from VR. And if you are interested, then you have to then you have to watch this video. Uh, I'm back here. Yeah. I think the biggest news uh, for October coming from Germany from the company Size, I think many people know it, and they're bringing out the Size T Scan Hawk is the name of this handheld scanner, and it is very new. It's like two days before they uh, announced this. Pretty new information. And it's a portable hand scanner, like uh, I think if somebody is from the market regarding to the queer form handy scan, uh, I think that's, that's I think uh, it's the target from this product to go on this. Um, and uh, they have it all installed together with the GOM Inspect Suite, what they already owned in, in uh, the size company uh, since they purchased GOM company. And um, I think what's interesting is we can see it here or bottom line as there's different application um, and we saw here that they have um, it's a little bit similar technology or uh, the idea not the technology yeah, not the technology themselves they're working with uh, different uh, laser lines they have in seven red crosses i think there is um, queer form have more think maybe up to 11 or something then they have one red single line for details and they have for the f uh, fin mode they have five blue lines, or they say on the website. Um, they're giving us an accuracy from 0 0.2 millimeters. I think this, um, and that is pretty similar. If we move over to this handy scan, what is already on the market, and they're telling us the handy scan black have also 0 0.25 accuracy and the, the volumetric accuracy. That's pretty similar uh, what they have, and they have here up to 11 uh, blue uh, laser cross lines. And on the smaller one, they have seven and and uh, seven red or seven um, blue. If you have the smaller system, um, so that's uh, definitely the system where you have to compare it. I think there's not so many other competitors on the market. There's few companies from China coming with uh, similar technology. Don't have seen them so much here in Germany. Uh, I think that's just a big battle of the big metallurgy companies for hand scanner market. That's the, I think, most important news for this month, but stay here in this uh, episode. I go more further to more, more this is for short range hand scanner application or one. I have to move one short back. There's a few couple of few videos what you can look and find it on the website. It's where they show how this system is working and I find this one pretty interesting. Uh, they, um, Combined this here with other scanners and photogrammetry. Uh, and then here we see it, then they took other scanners, make the photogrammetry application. And here you see the seven lines are working. They can scanning this shiny material, that's quite important. And uh, you see there's this one line application. And I don't know if they show us also the blue line application. We saw it it's now next, it's coming here with the blue light uh, for scanning details. Uh, that's uh, quite interesting. I like this video. And the other ones is their practice with photogrammetry, we can see it here on this video. Um, they're using here um, photogrammetry targets and also scale bars to put them on these uh, um, on this measurement object. And over photogrammetry, they can reach uh, better global accuracy in case that photogrammetry uh, detect the target, bring in one high accuracy coordinate system. And the hand scanner knows when you put them in the hand where he is in the moment and you don't have the editing of the arrows uh, it's important for tracking and for global accuracy. You see this guy here in the video, put this together and then he can scan it uh, on a high, from a higher position. You see it? Uh, here we can make the photogrammetry application at first, bring in one system and after that he's starting, if he did, now he has the global targets together from the different shots and now he can start with the scanning. You see it here, okay, on the video and then he get the final result in high accuracy. I like this video too. So coming back, uh, going to Slam Scanner, company from Italy. We're moving from Germany to a little bit warmer Italy. Uh, Gexel, uh, maybe some know it from Reconstructor Software. They're working over a couple of time on the Heron system. This is a um, Slam based scanner. Um, and uh, they bring now out the, they call them the Heron, um, I think Twin is the name. Uh, and they have uh, now two laser scanners combined 
to get a better um, capturing of the area. I think the only one, the other one was only 2D, uh, like 2D with an angle and don't can see everything. They put now two scanners together. It's uh, basically, I think, Velodyne scanners. Accuracy is similar, we see it here. Look at accuracy, three centimeters, maximum survey resolution two, as is the resolution and five centimeters for close wings. I think that is uh, more for GIS application as uh, for some so, um, survey application possible, but not for the highest one. Okay, also they bring uh, the Gexler Blinger Heron MS Twin uh, on the market. We stay in the Wildine application. We have the Carter scanner, maybe you can see later. Uh, the interesting Carter have also uh, the same slam based scanner, but you have it a handheld with a moving uh, um, laser head, and then they use also visual slam by cameras. I think that's different. And they uh, announced Carter Cloud, as I spoke before in the uh, last episode or uh, for two episodes. And uh, they're telling that they exclusively announced that Carter Cloud works exclusively with only Velodyne uh, lighter sensors. Uh, I don't know why they have paired this together. They say something from accuracy. We have to see. I think there's many applications for low cost, high accuracy laser scanners. I don't know. Maybe they are too focused on one window. Of course, Velodyne is not a bad window. We have to see like similar look here that's competitor from Wildline. It's uh, the company Auster, and they're bringing something uh, news that they're working on solid state lidar. Um, there's few companies on the market like Seven something. They are working hard on these application solid state. For these people, um, what is the difference? Like the other ones, what we saw the Wildline having turning parts inside. So the Wildline, the existing ones. Having turning parts, the laser is turned by a motor, and then the the beam going in the in the room. And these one newer ones, they have no rotation part like motors and mirrors. They have uh, here uh, um, focused lenses and microchips, as there's no moving parts. And uh, this give you the advantage to make it cheaper because you don't have any motors and mirrors inside, and uh, you don't have um, things that can go broken if you have no moving parts inside. And that's just the idea from this one. They say we are working now 200 meter long range, uh, uh, 200 meter range by 10% reflectivity, I think they say. I think they talked something about $600. Uh, they will give the first uh, systems out in 2020 to partners and other development people. In 24, they announced or they think about going on the market with this product. Um, and you see, that's one application is autonomous driving, of course robotic application and also in heavy industry like uh, detecting, saving some areas, this application. Also interesting solid state, um, I like this stuff because making the sensor cheaper from like an uh, expensive, uh, the typical now um, sensors like an Austin Auster, Velodyne, it's maybe 4,000, 8,000, 16,000 coming up to 600. That's pretty interesting for the future. Of course, next one, sorry guys, I have only in Germany here, uh, this information, it's on my German website, it's, uh, I spoke in only for short, you will find it in English more. It's a new iPhone, have the LiDAR system, and what I like to show you, it's, uh, they will use it for AR application, but it is uh, the company um, Matterport, I think many people know the Matterport system, and they um, say we are, you, uh, we are developing uh, an app, and people can use these lighter information, put them in our Metaport capture app, what we see here. And um, and they have, I think, something, many downloads. And they want to use it for bringing this to um, um, making like room tours uh, for this kind of application. I think it will be not a, a survey, like some people say, survey with an iPhone. Uh, it is a kind of a survey, you see it, uh, but it is not. Um, it's, it will be not like a high accuracy survey, uh, surveying like we see it with uh, terrestrial scanner stuff like that. But it's for a few applications interesting, like we real, real estate market, maybe um, gaming or uh, also movie industry. For them, it's pretty interesting. Next one, going to other software. Pointly, it's uh, I'm pretty also happy speaking about another German company. I think Pointly is um, definitely. Um, I think I get some support from the government and if I'm not wrong, I uh, would say that they are, um, uh, this is a spin-off from Hasso Plattner Institute and uh, Hasso Plattner is one of the founders from SAP company and he giving a lot of money what he earning in 
in technology, but also in sports club. Um, but I think it's uh, it's from this institute, and they developed on a software where you does classification, and they show it here um, how it works. They have and also it's a cloud based stuff. You have to upload photogrammetry key point cloud data here from a drone. Uh, I think they were using um, classification tools, but also classification by color. Um, and I let it a little bit run here. I have to shut this out. Um, that they can figure out some things like trees. They can figure out by color, of course, or by geometry. They can definitely detect houses, stuff like that. But they're also able, if you look inside here, detect the cars, like you can figure out cars, take them out. Uh, and they show also that you can define areas by your own. Here you have an excavator. You can use a lasso and mark this area. And then you can take this information out and fill it up. That's pretty important if you do DGM generation. Also I like these all this stuff. Uh, it's in one application thing we um, I find it interesting if you're working with uh, LiDAR data from mobile mapping cars and from drones. That's definitely interesting. I don't know how uh, they really focused more on these uh, both the geometry or color. I think geometry is important too because we get now a cheap these solid state scanner where we can use and they don't have color in the moment. And the overlay from camera and color and moving cars, I think that's definitely so interesting. Last one is this. I'd like to show it to you. It's uh, coming from HP and they have an, uh, here I will go back, they, I think they announced, uh, I will not go too deep, uh, they announced a new or an own VR system, the Reverb G2 VR system, having a lot of uh, new stuff inside and they want not only going to um, uh, like the movie, uh, the gaming market, they want also go to industry application and they have also like a uh, like an eye sensor, tracking sensor, different stuff. Uh, it's very interesting and for this they use like in um, uh, as they have their own headset for this and they have an OmniZap platform HP where developer can uh, get access to the VR system and use it in their own system as they, they deliver like a platform where they can communicate with other peoples uh, they like to use it here for geospatial application or for training application, as you see here, training application for firefighters or uh, st stuff like that. And as you can use these VR system in yours, for this they use these um, OmniSet platform, as you have here on one hand, you have these VRG OmniSet edition, and then you can go with other sensors uh, inside, and then you have these developer SDK system and can uh, work with your computer system and get a final result. I'm uh, done for this October news. If you like it, give us a thumbs up um, and um, leave a comment if you have something and like this and share this video. Bye bye. Till next time, Eric.